I can't do opera, Werner. I only do rock and roll. Cause nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. <laughs> you are indeed one hell of a filmmaking genius. A kind of self-taught, self-made inventor of cinema. In a time like ours, when so many things become random and fake, you're, you are a tower of integrity. And you show us that filmmaking starts and ends with being true to yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the EFA Lifetime Achievement Award goes to none less than Werner Herzog. Wim, thank you very much. It was wonderful. And I loved the aria, so there was a lot of effort into all this. And of course, I thank the Academy for <clears throat> honoring me like this. I feel very moved by your response. And I feel moved in particular because uh, I always wanted to be a good soldier of cinema. I still try to be. But the soldier is never alone, and I had the good fortune that um, I have a brother, Luki Stipetic, who did over the decades since Aguirre, The Wrath of God, finances, contracts, world sales, uh, organization. He's here, he normally hides, but Luki, this time you should stand up for a moment. So, So, I'm very proud and Luki Stipetic has made a lot of things possible that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Um, I would like to address two things since I'm here at this uh, ceremony. One is European film, very briefly. I think uh, we can be glad that there is no such thing as European film cinema per se with a common style and a common culture. Uh, it shouldn't. I'm very regional and I'm proud to be a Bavarian filmmaker. I, I don't see myself so much as a German filmmaker. So, but, but the solidarity, the solidarity and the efforts and the cooperation of European countries has made it possible that countries that are too small for sustaining a big film industry, uh, all of a sudden make wonderful films and become visible. I mentioned, for example, Denmark. I would like to mention Romania. All of a sudden we have phen phenomenal films coming from those countries because the European solidarity made it possible. <laughs> The second thing I would like to address is Europe itself. 
Of course, uh, I do not live in Europe. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. And I see certain things with a sharp profile from outside. And I, of course, I hear complaints uh, coming from, German, uh, from Germany and other countries. The European uh, Union is in bad shape, and there's hiccups here, and stumbling blocks there, and the financial crisis, and the Brits want to leave all good and all right. Let it be like this is. But uh, one thing that I always keep uh, thinking about when I think about Europe, um, and it has to do with peace. And we have seen attempts, silly attempts, to create peace by putting flowers in the rifles, the muzzle of a rifle in the time of the hippies. It has not created peace. The conflicts even increased after that. We have seen um, even filmmakers who believe that with uh, meditation itself, we would create world peace. It is not practical. It does not create world peace. It comes in a different way. And this is why I have the feeling the European Union has a very specific value. After all the cataclysms in the 20th century and in the millennia before, there's a peace project which is practiced and it is functioning. And it is the biggest peace project world history has ever seen. So we should rather be glad for that. Thank you very much.